Uh, but let me move on and tell you a bit more about who we are. So we are the Green Collective Singapore. Um, we started working on an idea which was completely out of sheer frustration, honestly, as a social entrepreneur. And with my fellow co-founders, Aggie and Danielle, uh, one of the issues that existed by being a social entrepreneur, trying to achieve the SDGs, was that how do you find an ecosystem in order to grow and to make sustainability financially sustainable? And that is the challenge that we were tackling. And there were issues that we all faced as social entrepreneurs, which was about scale and normal business issues, which are very, very uh, tough to tackle when you are a small enterprise. And that's what we wanted to solve with the Green Collective. What we could see was that a market was changing. Singapore was changing. Uh, users and customers were asking for difference, not just from larger companies, but they were asking it from smaller companies. Provenance was becoming a word which was being used much more. People wanted transparency. And in the midst of all this, we wanted to start a movement. So what do we do? Uh, we look like a retail shop, but it's been a big debate that I've always had with Danielle that what we should say at the entrance of Grid Collective is this is not a shop, this is a collective. What we want to do is we want to empower a community of change makers. So if any of you on the call want to start a social enterprise which tackles any of the UN SDGs, whether it is climate action, whether it's empowering women or supporting livelihoods or solving healthcare related issues, this is a platform where you can come. This is a platform where you can voice your work. And what we want to do is to basically give you a path so that you can become successful. And that's what we want to do. And this is how we do it. So the Green Collective essentially acts as an incubator for small social enterprises. We work internally more like a trade association wherein you are given opportunities but you are also given the responsibility of running the collective. We were actually inspired by a lot of the cooperative models that exist across rural Asia. And we have implemented that into a retail setting of a high cost retail market like Singapore in order to solve this problem and to disrupt the way retail is done. So what we do is we help a lot of first time retail social enterprises come in, we help them grow, we provide them a lot of uh, information regarding data analytics, pricing and other things which are very tough to get when you start. We help them nurture as well. So what nurture means is we help them do partnerships, we match them with corporates and give them more opportunities that are possible when you work with many more social enterprises under the same house. And of course, collaboration. There can be no collective without collaboration and the collaboration is not limited to members or consignees or other uh, khakis as we call them within the collective. It goes beyond that and the, and a the collective spirit goes beyond just the walls of the green collective to the overall ecosystem in Singapore. And this is the core. Our philosophy is a collective model. What it means and that's something we like to stress about a lot is that we should just not use terminology we should actually put it in practice. The, the claim with the collective model we always had was that each and every brand is not here as a vendor. Each and every brand is here as a family member and family shares. If you go to the Green Collective right now, there are two brands behind the cashier desk who will be managing and giving you the best customer experience that anyone can Funan provide. Because you know what? These guys have actually built their brands. These guys actually understand impact. These guys understand what, where you are in your journey to sustainability. And that's something that we share. We share much more than that as well. So we started sharing a retail space when we were 12 people strong. And today we are also sharing a logistic space together. So we are basically using a human value, which is based on sharing and a business model, which is based on collective to solve problems of economies of scale. So that is what, the collective model of Green Collective is inspired and that's what we do differently. And this is an example of that fact that it actually happens. So, and this has been our journey actually, the picture that you see on the lower side on the left is 
uh, starting in a 600 square feet little space, which was uh, in the east in Kinect Mall. That's where we started our journey. Uh, we were basically testing it out actually. And there were 12, 12 brands who joined us initially. We grew into a larger space wherein we always had this criteria that how much ever the space is, it will always not be retail. We had a little area which we call the Kampung where we do workshops, talks, discussions, and it was open to the public to do any event they wanted related to, of course, the sustainability criteria. So, and from to that to moving to Funan, which happened around July last year, we've grown. We've grown not just in terms of real estate space, but we've grown from 12 brands to around 43 brands, which are today a part of the collective. And yes, that brings us to today. So uh, COVID, like, ev like affecting everyone else in the industry, especially retail, uh, it affected us as well and uh, affected us in a good way because our original e-commerce plans was for 2021. And uh, we have put, pushed, pulled it up front six months, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's called the Green Thinker. And why is it called the Green Thinker? Uh, we call ourselves the little kampung in the little red dot. And within the kampung, we have khakis. And we did not want to lose the Singaporean essence by saying TGC online. And the Green Thinker, because when you come to the Green Collective, and we've been seeing that for the last two years, it's an experiential journey. It's almost a journey towards zero waste life that you can envision and imagine. The amount of times we've seen a wow while people go about finding products and looking for that surprise that they, went, that they get and the satisfaction they get when they find those products, is something which is unparalleled to any amount of revenues. And that's where the Tinkat comes in. The beauty of the Tinkat is when you open that each layer, there is a surprise in it because it was packed for you in the morning and you don't know when you open it for lunch what was exactly in it. And that's where the green Tinkat concept came in, which is basically the fact that we want to provide you alternate to what you're already consuming. We don't judge you in terms of the fact that whether you are a zero waste or not, we understand that everyone has their own journey. And we want you to start taking that journey in a sustainable way. And that's the mission with which we are working. So this is, I'll quickly go through this. This is our website, which we have launched. Again, you will see that shop is one part of it. Uh, however, a lot of the focus that we do currently is on experiences, which is workshops and uh, different chats, the Kampung chats that we have, which are on thought leadership, as well as the green thinker stories that we have, which are more of how to use a lot of sustainable products, how to compost, how to use product, how to reduce waste, food waste in your house. So that's what we do in the experiences. And of course, the journal is a lot about the blogs that you can see and make it a part of your journey towards zero waste. And yes, I think the core of the collective is people because we are essentially a business model which is as human-centered as it can be. And the Green Khakis, which is basically our members uh, who are actually classified based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So when, uh, when a, a, a social enterprise actually ap applies to become a part of the collective, they go through a curation process wherein they are actually aligned to a SDG target and following the SDG target, they are also uh, they are also they also go through a curation at a product level. So that's what we ensure that basically the promise of impact that we are doing to you is actually sacrosanct. And what we want to do in the future, and especially with the launch of the website, is to get better on impact measurement so that tomorrow we can actually show the impact that you create by choosing a sustainable product over a non-sustainable one. And explaining to you in a very transparent way, what does sustainability mean for that particular product? And that is our brand promise. So we are working towards that and that's something we will be building in much more on the website as we move forward. And yes, that's the green thinker. Uh, so do visit it. Uh, there's a wide range of products which are curated based on UN SDGs that you can see. Each brand actually uh, has been put on the SDG, so you can click within the community and 
actually shocked by values or things that you want to stand for as well. So uh, if you want to shop, of course, please go ahead. Uh, please don't overbuy. I have to say that because we are in the business of creating sustainability and sustainability needs to be sustainable first. Don't buy what you don't need, but uh, do try to switch to a sustainable alternative if you can. And with this, uh, I will pass the screen to Robin. So who's from Eco Business and many of you who've been involved in the sustainability space will definitely know Robin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop talking and pass the mic to Robin to kickstart our discussion and introduce the panelists and Robin, over to you. Maya, 